Hello, and thanks for coming along to And We Have an Office Dog, the digital agency podcast where we talk to agency owner directors and learn more about what makes them tick. From the things that make them similar to the things they'd rather have known sooner, where they've had success, and where they've learned some hard lessons. All will be revealed with your host, Chris Simmons, the agency coach, and he'll be talking to a different awesome agency person in each episode, asking them four questions and seeing where the conversation takes us over the next 25 minutes. Okay, so let us begin. Over to you, Chris. Thanks, voiceover guy. Uh, today on the podcast, we have Cheryl Luzet from Wagda. Uh, she's the CEO of the f- multi-award winning, I think, isn't it, Cheryl? Yes, it is, yeah. Hello, welcome. Hello, hi, thanks for having me today. No, no problem at all. Um, thanks very much for being on. Um, first of all, as, as ever, everyone who comes on the podcast gets a massive opportunity to, uh, to plug their agency and tell us all about them to the millions of listeners, of course. Uh, <laughs> so please give us a plug. What does Wagda do? Who is Wagda? Brilliant. Okay, thanks. So we're a digital marketing agency. We've been going about 10 years and we tend to often work with in-house marketing managers and Mm -hmm. help them as their kind of team of digital specialists. So quite often our clients, they might not be digital natives or they um, don't necessarily have the specialist skills in digital. So I have a team of specialists that are able to support them. So we started off as an SEO agency and then as time has gone on, we've expanded into other services. So we do a lot of social media, a lot of paid ads, content marketing, PR, that sort of thing. Um, SEO has become more about brand building, I think, over the past 10 years. So that's why we've kind of expanded what yeah. we what we do. It kind of has, isn't it? I think once you get the basic principles of past SEO, it is mostly mm. sort of brand led in, in it, as long as you've got a brand, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> so how, how, how long's Wagda been going for? Just over 10 years. Oof. Well, got, that feels like a milestone when we got to 10 yeah. years. Yeah, you, you had a party, didn't you? We had a party, but unfortunately I wasn't there because I had COVID. So they had <laughs> so a party without me. You didn't come to your own 10-year party. Oh, no, dear. I, w- I was there on Zoom, but it wasn't quite the same. <laughs> you were a box in a window. I was a box, yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Um, so, uh, as with ever, um, over the next twenty odd minutes or so, we're gonna um, have a couple of. I'll ask a couple of questions. We'll have a chat. Uh, so, to kick things off, uh, what do you think's been one of the biggest successes over the last ten and a bit years of running the agency? Mm, okay. Well, I think just surviving ten years feels like a bit of a success, <laughs> to be honest. Particularly what we've been through. Time over takes the past its toll, years. doesn't it? <laughs> yes, it really does. It really does. I've definitely aged. Um, but I think, you know, for us, winning two search awards, mm-hmm. that was a massive achievement, you know, nationwide, UK recognition for the work that we do. We were massively proud of that. Um, also, I kind of think the work that we do for our clients, supporting our clients, one of the things that I've always tried to do is to make SEO very accessible to our mm-hmm. clients so they can really understand what we're doing and really take them on that journey. And I think when I think of what we've, you know, what we've done to our clients to transform their businesses and transform their turnover that I think that's you know one of the sort of biggest successes that that we can it's a success for sure yeah to be able to mm. well, to be proud of that as well is quite yeah. you know you could just be any agency taking money off of people and you, it sounds like you, you you know you kind of care about the mm. end result as, as well yeah. No, completely, so, yeah so out of those last 10 years the the the, the awards that you've won um, looking after the clients, do, do, do you, uh, what, what's, what's the headcount at the minute? How many people are in the, in the team? So 16 of us at the moment mm-hmm. um, employed and we've got a few freelancers that work for us, but we are recruiting. Oh. So if anyone's looking for a job, <laughs> bit plug there. <laughs> if anyone out of all of the people who are, who are applying for jobs right now are looking for a job at an agency, which is actually pretty cool, um, I recommend you get in touch with, uh, with uh, Cheryl at Wagda. Um, so there's your plug. You get Yay. the freebie. It's two in, a, two, two in one podcast. <laughs> it's <That's> amazing. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you could, though, go back and look at all of the things that have happened in the last 10 years and talk to the, the younger, more sprightly mm-hmm. version of yourself, what would you tell her? Oh, it's a great question, actually. Um, I feel like over the past 10 years that I've learned so much mm. and my own development has come on so much. I think things that I would tell myself, I would definitely be more ambitious. 
Okay. I think I felt at the beginning that I couldn't do this, that if I'd thought to myself that I was going to be running an agency, employing 16 people in 10 years' time, I think I would have said, oh, I can't, I can't do that. That's mm. not something I can do. So I think I would encourage myself to be more ambitious and to have more faith in myself and really just say to myself, I can do whatever I put my mind to do. Yeah. And if I don't have the skills to do that thing, then I will have to learn how mm. to do that thing. And, you know, and actually you, you have to upskill as your business grows and you, you're yeah. kind of forced, you're forced to do that. So. Well, it's a, it's a massive learning curve, isn't it? Because, yeah, I mean, most, most um, digital agencies aren't set up by business owners. They're set up by mm. smart people who can run digital campaigns. And, uh, yeah. and, and, it's, and there's a lot of lessons along the way, as well as just you know, general fatigue from running businesses. So, mm. yeah, good. Yeah, but here's absolutely. the here's the here's the follow up to this. Would your younger, more sprightly version of you listen to your own advice? Oh, that is such a great question. Probably not, actually. I think I probably didn't have the confidence. I don't know. <laughs> I think <laughs> the irony, have the some irony more confidence of and ambition and, and yeah. drive, and oh, I can't I do it. So. I think also being the other thing I was going to say is about being proud to charge what you deserve to be paid for yeah and I think that's a massive thing especially when you're just starting out you think oh I can't charge that mm. and just you know be proud of what you do and learn the value of what you're uh, doing yeah absolutely I think um I think the the pay what you're worth uh kind of mm. mindset is it, it's it's big in the sort of management consultancy world it's mm. really not at all in the uh in in the digital agency world i think that's i think there's part of, part of that is obviously when you start out you don't want don't want to lose potential clients to mm. to price problems and then it's a race to the bottom and it takes a long time to start going do you know what actually we should we should really put our prices up yeah. and anyone listening to this running an agency right now have a look at your prices and ask yourself when was the last time you put them up and do you actually think that you're worth that and probably more yeah. um probably you know if you're part of the uh, the agency owner audience actually listening to this you probably are worth more because mm. you're listening to this you must have good taste so mm. therefore put your prices up yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we, we find when you do that people don't really flinch you kind of think oh gosh when i put my prices up things mm. are going to you know people are going to walk away and no one does well more often than not it's um it's a. It, it's not that they don't want. To, it's not that they want to pay more. It's mm. that they're willing to accept uh, paying more because they can see the results are worth it. You know, they've got their own internal targets, and as long as you get them at the right time for their financial year, um, you're usually okay. Mm. Yeah. Um, uh, it, it, you know, it depends when you, the type of clients you have. If they're if they're much larger, you know, where they've got sort of corporate um, corporate uh, billing and things like that, it's a lot easier to get some of these price rises through. However, on the smaller clients, you just need to time it right and make sure that they see the value of it. Mm. And I think you know, if you, the advice that you would have given yourself would have would have would have probably, I think you might have listened to that one. Mm, yes, that, yes. That absolutely. one's tan more tangible. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, is there something that you sort of over the years, other than you know, a bit, a bit more ambitious with the with the growth, um, that you kind of regret or mm. wish that you'd done sooner, maybe? Mm. I think the thing that um, I don't know whether regret is the right word, but something I would definitely change about um, the way I've run the business over the past ten years is um is around kind of managing the team and managing staff and i think i felt the need particularly in the early days to kind of carry the team okay and i think i forgot that they were actually there to support me as much as i was there to support mm. them and you know and actually when you carry people it doesn't really help them because then they don't get to learn and develop and grow and you know yeah. on their own side um and actually it just wore me out completely so i think i would definitely yeah. try harder to push people into the deep end and let and let's you know let me see what they can do yeah and i guess early doors that's hard as well because you, you, you it's you're you're paying uh to to you know to feed and clothe people as well as as well as for them yeah. to to support the doing of a business and it's really hard to, mm. to to let go of certain stuff i think one of the one of the hardest parts of of being a leader is that delegation piece and it's not mm. just because you don't want them to grow you just don't want to risk the loss of something going wrong as well and yeah. it's quite hard to, to to live by so let go yeah so is there something though in a similar kind of vein that you've um learned the hard way but it has set you up for for this recent sort of spate of wins and get to 10 years is there something that you've mm. kind of gone ah oh, shit I wish I'd learned that earlier but if I didn't learn that lesson I wouldn't be where I am now yes 
Um, I think um, two things I'm thinking. Mm. Um, very much around if you realize that a member of staff is not right mm. is making a decision a lot earlier about that yeah. because actually it doesn't it doesn't help them keeping someone on in a role that they're not good at and not performing at is actually quite demoralizing for them as well yeah. and we found those times when we've kept someone on and we've said oh we'll keep we'll keep help we'll keep trying to support them we'll keep helping them mm. actually they they actually become quite upset themselves about being in that situation so i think about being quite decisive in those scenarios but then also remembering that um that your, your team is your business so very much mm. being picky about who you recruit um, and i think in the past we were probably guilty of employing people that just sounded really enthusiastic <laughs> and they just sounded really passionate and we were like wow we were really impressed yeah. and we always had this thing where we would say isn't it odd like we only ever find one good person to employ when we interview and that was because every time we found the first good person we gave them a job so of course we only ever found one good person yeah. so now we are we're a lot more picky we um spend a lot more time over the recruitment process mm -hmm. so that even if we find someone we really like we we interview a few more people just so we can get some balance yeah um obviously you have to be careful because if you leave it too long then that person can go off and get another job somewhere else so then how, you actually... how do you manage that balance because i know that that's a problem for quite a lot of agency owners in that mm -hmm. um you've got to balance the uh, thoroughness from your perspective they've got to be the right cultural fit as well as the right sort of um, uh, ability level fit um, mm -hmm. but if they're interviewing at five other places at the same time mm -hmm. so how, how are you managing that balance it's, it's really hard actually and one of the things that we that we started to do at the end of last year is is constantly recruit so we have a freelancer that works for us that is constantly recruiting and constantly looking for people mm. so that we can kind of get to know them a bit better before we even get into that interview process. So okay. before we've even got to that point where we have a job that might work for them, mm. we've kind of maybe already had a coffee with them and kind of had that sort of relaxed uh. conversation. So you kind of get to know them as a person before you have that pressure of like a pre-approval process. A yes, yeah, and Brilliant. we find that that's working really well and. Um, you know, when, when, when we do finally we suddenly need a new member of staff because we have a big project that's suddenly come mm. in, we have then, you know, people that we've already kind of got on the back burner that we can yeah. approach and see if they're ready to, uh, to make yeah, that move. Yeah, and, and it's got to be both, it's got to be two ways, isn't it? I think if you're looking at um, the way that people think these days, especially, uh, no offence to younger people, of course, but younger people typically look for the fit uh, mm. as well as the salary. But if they were to pick the two, that the fit is often a, a, a deciding factor these days and I think having that kind of getting to know you phase before mm. any jobs come up is, is probably quite a good move. Mm. Yeah, no, we find it works really well for us actually and um, you know, it really helps us to, to kind of be a bit more flexible with our mm. recruiting. Um, yeah, it's been really good for us actually to kind of have this process of constantly recruiting, even though even when we're not recruiting. And and within the world of um, uh, of digital marketing at the minute, there's a big explosion post pandemic, and there's quite a lot of um, there's a lot of new business out there. But there's also a lot of people looking for work, whether they're mm. new to the industry or whether they've you know unfortunately had uh, problems with furlough and things like that. Um, so there's a big pool of talent. Um, but it's kind of, you've got to pick the right one, haven't you? Mm, you yeah, it's very right hard, people. I think, in an interview. I think you were always constantly surprised how someone turns out because mm. you see them in the interview and you, you can ask them as many questions as you want, but you don't see the real person in the interview, I don't think. No, it's, it's that, that, that part's really hard. And I guess part and parcel of your kind of getting to know them, like with a coffee or something like that mm. uh, process, probably does help quite a bit because at least mm. you uncover a little bit more than you would have done. Yeah. Um, unless they're like a back end developer and you'll never really know who they are. Because uh, <laughs> <No>. they <laughs> just run tell you. <laughs> exactly. I mean, that's, that's on a good day. <laughs> Sorry, back end developers. Um, so if there was. Uh, someone listening right now who was looking at maybe starting their own agency in the future uh, in a different town to Wagda, so they're not going to be a competitor. Cool. Uh, yeah. If they were uh, looking to start another, uh, start their own agency, what piece of advice would you give them? I think I would say to them to be constantly learning, which mm. I think we are in digital marketing anyway. 
Um, and I think one of the things that I've got masses of benefit from over the years is reading lots of business books because I think mm. it really opens your mind to different ideas and different ways that other people are thinking and just kind of accept that you know as the business is growing if it grows as fast as Wagada did that your your skills are probably not going to grow as fast as you need them to mm. and maybe not beat yourself up about that but keep keep on learning and keep up skilling and you know, just keep trying really and, and constantly evaluate what you do. And I think one of the things that the team are always kind of like laughing at me about is that I get really excited by failure because I, I kind of lo <laughs> I, I love it when we fail. Because Guys, we screwed up again. We screwed up again. <laughs> but it, it, it tells us what not to do next time. And I kind of yeah. think every time we fail, we're not going to do that again. As long as we yeah. learn from that, yeah. it's something that we can kind of cross off the list. Done that one now, yeah. you know? It's, um, it's, it's only, it's only a, a, a failure if you've learned from it. Otherwise, you're just a bit silly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So, so learn, grow, keep going, keep growing, keep learning. Um, what if, what if you've just started your agency and you're in that kind of, we've had our initial bout of success. You know, when you just start and you built everything, suddenly pops through because you've got all your referrals and all your friends have referred work in, and you picked up some work over time and things like that. Um, yeah. Just past that little kind of hump, things start getting real. Um, what about at that point in time? Is there some? It would would that advice be different, or would it be the same kind, same advice? I think that's probably quite a milestone for the business, isn't it? Because mm. you kind of had that initial surge, and it's the the momentum is going to dry up unless you can actually start to do some outbound business development. Yeah. If you start to bring some staff in and start to um, really turn it into a proper business, you know. Mm. Um, and I think that's the point that you, you need to have your wits about you, really. And I think as soon as you get to the point where you think, oh, I can do this, mm. then you're probably going to start dropping balls. Whereas yeah. if you're constantly kind of on, on your toes and being careful about what you're doing and thinking about, you know, thinking quite strategically about where you want to take the business, mm. then I think, you know, that's, that's the way you're going to succeed. Whereas if you start to kind of think that I've, I've got this in the bag, then you're probably going to trip up somewhere <laughs> along the way. Yeah, 18 months in, uh, you start losing that kind of referral momentum and things yeah. like that. And, and uh, you yeah. c it can very easily turn quite sour, not, not necessarily from a financial point of view, but because you start going, I keep putting the same amount of effort in every day and yeah. no one seems no. to be picking up the phone calling me. This is strange, what's going on? Um, yeah. But that's, that's when, you, that's when uh, you kind of test your mettle uh, as, a, as an agency owner because you've got to hire someone to fill the chunk of work that you do in order mm. to go out and develop the business and that's where quite a lot of the speaking stuff comes in and things like that and and uh, there's a lot there's a lot of different ways of, of building your own kind of marketing machine but a, a proper marketing machine is essential for any agency mm. uh, not just because you'll lose clients but you also lose staff and like you said a minute ago it's hard to find staff so you need a bit of an outward we're great marketing machine for people as well yes. as clients and I think that's 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 uh, that's quite quite a, a thing to do and it's costs a lot of money as well Mm, yeah, absolutely. Which is scary when you've just started an agency. Yeah, and I agree. And I think when you just start out, you're tempted to kind of just get some cheap staff rather than invest in some yeah. people that can really take you forward. Whereas actually, if you spend a bit more and get someone a bit more experienced, then it can actually absolutely transform what you're yeah. doing. Yeah, I, 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 um, I've, I totally agree with you on that one. I, I made a couple of big mistakes with, with that in the past where I thought, few cheaper people is definitely better than than a few uh, skilled people who cost mm. more that being said i had uh, one uh, apprentice who sort of beat the beat beat the odds in that sense he was both cheap and excellent and within like the first 6 months of being an apprentice he was just paid whatever he was whatever he was worth he was bloody brilliant wow. um wish there were more more of them um yeah. so in the building of the agency uh, over the over the years, what do you think has been one of the kind of the most sort of powerful growth uh, mm. tools, channels? I hate the word hacks uh, that you that you've found has worked best. Mm. One of the things that I've found most useful is talking to other business owners and other agency owners. Mm -hmm. So um, sort of local networking, but also um, going into London to things like Search London. Mm -hmm. I found that really useful and really sort of jumping on any opportunity to say to people, how do you do that? What happens in your agency yeah, when yeah. this happens? How do you make that work? 
because I don't have masses of agency experience in my previous career. I was in-house quite a lot. And then the agency I worked in, they hadn't ever run an agency before. So I feel like I'm probably lacking in experience of other people's agencies. Mm. So having that uh, ability to kind of jump on other people and share ideas has been really um, powerful for me, I think. And also when I take on new staff members that have worked in other agencies, I always take them out for coffee on their first few days and yeah. literally grill them of like, what was the structure like? How did yeah. you deal with this? And what happened about this? And Stripping them all, all the IP that they've, that they've learned <laughs> yeah. accidentally over the last couple of years. Yeah, um, and then I guess conversely, what's uh, out of all of the times you've tried to to grow the business, is there a, is there a, a thing that you've done that you've just gone, nah, that's just not worth keeping up, that's not worth the effort? Um, I'm not sure. I can't think of any particular thing where I've said that's not worth the effort. Um, Good. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, no, it doesn't have to be a negative thing. It's got. It, yeah. If if I mean, not everything will have been as fruitful, I guess. But no, but there's definitely no. things that there's definitely things that you would have doubled down on. And I think you know that bringing people in and taking things away uh, is great. But also speaking to your peers is is in, incredibly powerful. Mm. I think um, every time I run an agency mastermind session or anything like that, uh, the amount of good that comes from agency owners talking to agency owners uh, mm. about things which they all share as problems but they kind of didn't realize that they were having the same trouble it's a bit like a therapy session in some senses yeah. I remember I used to come away from those sorts of things and think crikey I'm not on my own <laughs> and yeah. have a little sit in the car before I get before I drive home <laughs> thinking oh it's a bit of a relief <laughs> It is, and I think it gives you a bit of confidence as well that you yeah. know it's not it's kind of not your fault that you're experiencing these problems that everybody's going through the same thing. Yeah, absolutely, and it, and and kind of a, a, a burden shared is a burden halved or something they say. I can't remember the yeah. specific uh, uh, phrase, but um, that kind of thing plus the support from someone who's been through a problem that you've just you're facing um, is great, especially when it comes directly from someone who's in your space because they run an agency as well so um mm. totally get it makes a makes a lot of sense to to, to learn from each other um someone on a, a previous podcast recording was saying that they do um a version of like uh, mastermind sessions but with other business owners who are outside of the space as well oh, wow. and they get quite a lot of uh, value from talking to someone who runs a um, another service-based business essentially um mm. so like a lawyer or a, an architect firm and things like that because even though the problems are, are different in scale and solution, they're realistically just business problems. Um, and it's always good to share. Yeah, no, which absolutely. Is, which is why this podcast exists, people. <laughs> <laughs> I do uh, think agency owners are really happy to share as well, which I think is Yeah, I think unless your office is a, 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 a corridor away from another agency, uh, mm. you often don't really mind sharing because mm there's plenty of work out there there's mm -hmm. as long as you're not you know cheating anyone you, you mm -hmm. know it's worth sharing because like I say you can halve your burden by knowing that someone else is having the same problem and things like that so absolutely absolutely well it's been absolutely lovely having you on the podcast Cheryl thank oh, you very much for, for joining me. me it's been brilliant um, on the next uh, on the next podcast we'll have another fantastic digital agency owner director to talk about all of the cool things they've been up to over the years of running their agency just like Cheryl hopefully uh, not directly competing with Cheryl because they'll have probably heard all of these great tips and taken them away um, thanks again Cheryl and uh, lovely to have you on brilliant thank you